Today on the Skid Factory, we're tuning the big block. Welcome back to the Big Block Crown Factory. Since we left you last, we have been pretty much working on this seven days a week, flat out. We've got a bunch of stuff done, and it's obviously sitting on the dyno at the moment. So I've uh, built a twin three-inch stainless exhaust. It's got uh, two big mufflers and two big resonators. Central exit, because that's the only place that the exhaust can go, because there's too many other things in the way of everywhere else. And this probably had an inch and seven eighths exhaust on it when it was built, so it's not really equipped for any other methods. I've plumbed up the hopper stoppers brakes with all new lines, all uh, braided sort of like Teflon lines that uh, our local um, part shop makes in house. So cheers to Ken for hooking me up, enjoy. Heaps of other plumbing and stuff has been done as well. We've got uh, breather cans and a full Harrop intercooler kit. We were waiting on that uh, last time we mentioned it, so this is sort of a, a universal part. There's a bottle and the heat exchanger at the front there. So that's all plumbed up. I've got a pump on there to pump the coolant around, and uh, I've actually added a, a, a Maradine fan on the front from Raceworks, and uh, that is controlled by the uh, Nexus ECU. We might have a look into that later. We've got some pretty cool functions going on here for that. Um, so we've got five days left before Gus's um, formal, so it's been a bit of a mad rush. We've got half the interior done. Uh, when we bring it back home from the dyno, we've then got to sort the rest of it out and get some seat belts. Write that down, Woody. Will do. Seat belts, important. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's been a bit of a mad rush, but it's not over yet. So we've just got to get through today. Of course, we're here at Knight Family Motorsport in Maroochydore with Kai. He is on the laptop fiddling with stuff and um, we're going to try and get it sorted out. Good morning, Kai. Good morning, Woody. Head tuner, head cleaner, head cook at Knight Family Motorsport. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How you going, man? Good, good, good. How are you? Good. We've already done a bit of tuning already off camera. Can you tell me what you've done, what's going on, yeah, how so much we... you like the Haltech Nexus R5? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, although I do like it. Um, but yeah, so we've gone through verified trigger angle. We uh, found that the sensor was flipped around polarity, so we've fixed that. We've got the trigger offset set. We've then gone through and just started setting up some of these uh, lovely pulse with modulated outputs, uh, things like thermo fans and... Uh, intercooler pumps and that sort of stuff. Just make sure everything works. Right on. So you call the term roughing in with the tune. So you've just been doing... When you say rough in, that's different to what you've just explained, but roughing in, ignition, timing, fuel stuff. What's the go there? Uh, yeah, so just putting in plausible values in the map. Um, we put all the injector data in um, from the Raceworks uh, injectors. So we've got those in there. Uh, and then, yeah, basically just quickly uh, adding some values uh, to the fuel ignition tables that we think. We did, uh, the base map I did give Al had what we, like, proper ignition timing in it. We've gone through and in the boosted areas, we've yanked a few degrees of timing out. Yep. Uh, just because we are going to be marginal on, especially it's got the big boost pulley on it. And um, the fuel pump may not keep up with it. I'm a little bit suspect on that. I've looked at the flow sheet. I don't know if it's going to have quite enough for the big boost pulley. Um, so we throw some, pull some timing out of it just to stay on the safe side and we'll come up and just sort of squeeze into it just to see what it's going to do. I see you smiling with a big boost pulley there. Is there anything to report about how it feels in, in top gear? <laughs> yeah, well, well, Woody was sitting at the back here um, and we were just having a little drive up on the dyno and just even just very gently, she feels like it is going to be an animal on the road. Right um, on. Yeah, even at part throttle. I think we got to about 50% and it... Oh, she was waking up. <laughs>
we're already out of fuel system. What? Yeah, we're already 100% on the injectors, fully drinking it. Oh. It's too big, Captain. So we didn't get too far, nothing went wrong, we just ran out of fuel system quite quickly. So um, we might have moved a decimal point the wrong way or something when we had the calculator out. But um, yeah, we've got no pump and no injectors left. It does look slightly angry, so it may still be making a fair bit of power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you made a prediction straight up, Kai, you said. Yeah, well, Al messaged me with some of the stuff, and I, I said, said I thought we'd probably be out of fuel system straight away, and um, and we are. Yeah, it's uh, I we just gave it a little, just run just to let it the converter catch the engine and see where it was gonna sort of roll it over, and even there we were at 105 percent duty cycle, so the injectors were fully open, and um, it was. Uh, we have the mixture targets conservatively rich at this point, but even still, it was um, it wasn't hitting. It was a little bit leaner than target, um, but nothing nothing dangerous or anything like that. Again, that's why we just do the little 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 catch point just to see where it was at. But um, yeah, fully fully drinking the fuel system dry. The big block is thirsty. So we're on E85 at the moment. Mm. Uh, we've already had the discussion of what we can do for a temporary solution for today. Mm. Is 98 an option or not? Are we going to go that way? So 98 would be an option. If we put it on 98, we'd like round numbers almost, you know, we'd, we'd cut the fuel demand of the engine by a considerable margin, probably 40-50% or something like that. Um, Al has just put a uh, like full tank of E85 in the thing though, so we've got the relatively trivial like problem that we'd have to pull E85 out, go get 98, blah blah blah, all the rest of it. One other potential option we have, which is rather unique to this car, is the fact it's drive-by wire and the fact that we hooked up the boost bypass. So we are just sort of toying with the idea, because obviously it has to get to Gussie's formal. So we're just trying to get a interim solution. Obviously the right solution is put the fuel system in it suitable for the engine, but an interim solution may be we can limit the maximum drive-by wire throttle angle, which will take boost out of the car, uh, and we could play around with the boost bypass to just get something that at least can be driven around, have a little bit of fun with for the interim. Is that a button on the health tech dash, Al? Is it like... For what? Well, and Gus drives it. You've got like a Gus button. Gus is not driving it. A button for the can Gus keeper. Gus has got a long time before he can drive this car, <laughs> <No>. I believe. <laughs> no, so the primary goal here is to get this thing to the, the Gussie's formal, so we're not, I'm not too worried about things uh, not being a thousand percent right now, so as long as it drives and runs properly, we'll probably just go with those options, and by the look of it, trying to lift its skirt up in the air, it, it, I don't think it'll be lacking power, so... So, yeah, so 940 on the engine, Dino Kai, what, did you see a power figure just then? I wasn't looking at that, I was, uh, fuel burn wise, I mean, it's probably, on where it had that catch point, it was making about sort of 15-ish pounds of boost in the manifold, yep. um, fuel burn wise probably would have been somewhere around about sort of, yeah, I'd say 650, 700-ish at the hubs. At yep. that kind of little hit? Yep. Whoa, yep. At, holy. Yeah, yeah, it was like, well, you got to remember, we've got, like, what have we got? We got uh, eight 1300 cc injectors, and they we're at 100% juice cycle. So yeah. we were spraying all the fuel into the engine that we could get. Admittedly, because it's a uh, not what's, it's, it's not a manifold referenced system, yep. so as the boost pressure comes up, the pressure across the injector falls down. Yep. Um, so it's not the same as if it was like a boost reference system and people are sort of saying, but yeah, so obviously the fuel rate drops off because of that, but still it would have been, yeah, it would have been probably 650, 700, I would, I would say. But, so, Alan, what's the plan? What are we doing? I think we're just going to go have lunch. <laughs> Call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> no, as long as it's running properly, uh, that's all we need for the moment, and we'll prepare better once we've... So, rev limiter, and then a throttle, uh, uh, throttle we restriction. Could, we could probably, like... The other thing, rev limiters aren't really nice on the engine, so yeah. I'd be much more... Uh, happy to just do a throttle limit. A throttle limit is much softer. It's essentially like we're just programming into the ECU backing off the throttle when yeah, like with yep. a safe margin on the fuel system. Yep. So when you're like cutting the engine or anything like that to do with the limiter, that's actually like a bit nasty on it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Right on. All right, you can show us how to do that. And Alan's going to make us sandwiches. Sandwiches.
lucky, hey, lucky I got you to hook the boost bypasser. <laughs> I said to Al, we should hook the boost bypass up in case we need to tame it down. You said for traction control. Yeah, I said for traction control, but hey. Okay, so luckily we hooked up the boost bypass on the Harrop 2650 which actually allows us to not only just control it when you're cruising but also under boost. It's kind of similar how a factory Ford Miami and stuff was done. Yep. Um, so lucky we did that because it allows me to open the bypass under full throttle which then drops the boost right down and then back into where we have fuel system for. So when you say opening the bypass, what's it actually doing? Can you just tell me what's, what's going on? So yeah, it's this little sucker right here, this one, little can. One second. So. Right on. This little, this little valve here and yep. what that does is it actually opens what almost looks like a little throttle body inside here and it basically links the underside of the rotors back to the front side of the rotor so it allows air to circulate, circulate and bypass the rotor group. Yeah, okay. And there's no harm in doing that, is there, no? No, well, I've, I know the factory Falcons and stuff do that literally in the standard ECU calibration. That's how they limit boost pressure on there. Yep. Uh, and we actually did quickly speak to Harrop about it because obviously... You wouldn't normally do this, and they said there's no issue doing it. So, right on, sweet. Cool, cool. perfect solution for us right now. Yeah, okay, sweet as. Pretty much levels out at that, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll throw some timing in it now. It'll uh, have the fuel. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Guys have been playing around with the operation of our bypass valve control solenoid and um, we bumped a little bit more boost in it, it was about seven and a half pound I think. Yeah. Off the so with that wide open it, it still makes five pound of boost, it doesn't bypass everything, so we're just giving it a little flutter to keep it up to about seven and a half pound and now we're out of fuel system um, safely out of fuel system about 85% duty cycle. So we do need to upgrade the fuel system. Um, I just was talking to Kai about this. I th thought, hey, how come I'm so far out with it? And it's probably just because this, this is obviously an older engine and they just use a bit more um, sort of fuel mass to make the same power as as a more modern engine, which I'm probably more used to playing with. So yeah, that, those sort of injectors probably would have been enough for more modern stuff maybe with a turbo but this thing just loves a drink so we'll come back with some 
bigger was, pumps and bigger injectors. Blower's also taking power out of the crankshaft, remember to get spun, whereas the turbo is not as much of a parasitic drag. So their blower will be pulling, the, like at the crankshaft itself is probably making, you know, uh, we're seeing 600 at the hubs here. So we're probably making, you know, 750 or something at the crankshaft, but then some of that power is being robbed by the blower yeah. to actually be spun. Even though these are far more efficient design, less power hungry than something like an old root style or something, but uh, that definitely can, can stitch you up. And also the pulley setup on the car could make, uh, well, as we saw, it was nearly a thousand horsepower in the engine dyno, you know what I mean? A um, bit more than what I think you were chasing for the street driving aspect, so. This is probably enough. I can, I can see it's not coming back. It's I know, just I know. Stay yeah. like that. <laughs> it's um, that's that's a that's a lot of power for something that is makes power pretty much instantaneously as well. Like it's it's peak torque is right on the converter. So four hundred horsepower nasty. in the Kinger with the blown iron line. That is fun, and that's more than enough power. This thing is going to be sick. And, and I guess the thing is, as a, a tuner as well, is like we're not even scratching the surface of this yeah, thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like this would, yeah. I can see a bit of Frank coming out in Kyle. Like, <laughs> let's go for more, let's go for more. <laughs> One eight hundred dot block. <laughs> but yeah, I guess you know, you put it like this setup here, and as you said, like six hundred odd at the hubs. Like in this car, is still going to be fun like like we were speaking about the hacko like the hacko has got 150 less than this um through a manual like and that is a fun quick car this is gonna feel pretty rowdy even with only seven pounds we haven't weighed it you're gonna weigh it don't we we don't have to but i reckon it'll be about 1500 kilograms yeah i reckon less than that just i'd say less, yeah. but yeah yeah all right so what's next alan we've got five days left of the deadline We've still got lots of work to get done. The customer's calling us. He's run out of budget. We've got to have a punch on. We have to fit the interior. Yep. Well, you have to fit the interior. Sorry, what did I say? And the Sorry, front what? end, I've got to do that. And the wipers, I suppose I'll do that too. Luckily, you can bolt them on because the windscreens are fitted now. Yeah. And also, luckily, they're fitted because it was absolutely pouring rain today. So that wouldn't have been good. And yeah. give a special shout yeah, out. Yeah, special shout out to Steve or Stephen from Windscreen Wizard in Gladstone. He actually bought me a windscreen. So thanks very much, mate. What a legend. Appreciate it. Yeah, legendary. Thanks, Steve. Uh, and uh, also to Steely. Steely's windscreens actually came and fitted both screens. He was uh, the nicest tradie I've ever met, I think. Didn't he remove them originally like he did, 10 years ago? About, yeah, I said, oh. I think you removed these. I don't suppose you still got them. And he's like, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think it was probably 13 years ago. Yeah. Probably a bit too much. But anyway. <laughs> so all that stuff's in. Starting to look like a car. Of course, we have to give a big thanks to Kai, as usual. And Danielle and Spencer. And Danielle and Spencer <laughs> for holding the fort down. Knight Family Motorsport. Give them a call if you want any specialized tuning thanks Kyle you're a legend man no worries at all really good on camera but a, also a really good tuner and you can see he we, knows what he's doing yeah we appreciate your support highly dude it's really good to have you yeah. on board it's awesome thanks I like being able to help out it's good hell yeah what do we do now load her up load her up In, um, interior detail rego skids detail um, seat belts unbolt the steering wheel and do a skid out of the shed with the steering wheel out the window <laughs> <laughs> just like the old I, days I reckon it'd do it alright <laughs> check the trans brake oh yeah check the trans brake we're back from the dyno and we've loaded the car back inside and done a bit more work to it that last 1% is still a whole week's work so we've been stuck into just tidying up all the little things on the list uh, it's all pretty much done now. We've got some plates on it. We have taken it for a drive and it is an angry little fella even though the power output wasn't as high as what uh, people probably expected at this stage. Uh, so everything seems to be working well. I've driven it uh, into town and back, got a wheel alignment, done a few things. And uh, now it's time to clean off 10 years of uh, schmutz off the body. So as most people would probably know, I don't really wash cars. 
and this might be the only wash it ever gets so uh, I'm going to hand it over to Woody and Mitch from Sunny Coast Auto Detailing has come up for the Arvo to uh, ply his trade and make it look fancy, fancier. This is our mate Mitch. Not only does Mitch lift lights, but he's also a gun detailer. He's pretty much done every one of our cars. I think he helped out just about. Every just one, about. Man. That's it. So there is some do's and don'ts when it comes to washing your car. Mitch has his own business. He uses his own products, but we've been hooked up with Bars Bugs. They've got a really good car care range. So we're going to run you through some pro tips as to the do's and don'ts to car washing, basically. Right on. And how to make it rain. Al just says, yeah, make it rain. <laughs> Al just says, call Mitch if you like Al. But I like washing my car. We've already given the crown a good little schmick up hey, already. I'm pretty sure I made you wash it before. Yeah, you did actually. Ain't nobody got time for washing cars. I've got time no for offense, washing cars. No offence, Mitch. <laughs> Let's, let's start with tech tip number one. Is remember Woody? We we shoot we put this in and shoot it at the ground yeah, before right we shoot it at the ground. The window, eh? <laughs> That's probably the biggest thing with these things is just making sure they're secure. Right put on. it on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks. I, I wish I watched this video. Before. <laughs> I was about to tell you, and then it just <laughs> it was too late. Yeah, so first things first, when we go to wash a car, is we want to do the wheels first. Um, Why is that, Mitchy? Basically, so we're not having water and soap and stuff on the car while we're, like if you think like this takes a little bit of time, if there's water on the car now, um, we've sort of got to rush to get back to that pretty quickly. Yeah, right on. Um, I'm yeah. just using this and today. And microfiber, I thought that would have to be dry use only of these things. You can pretty much use whatever you, you, you got really. Yeah, but sweet. I like using a, a cloth because you can sort of get your finger in there and sort of get it in yeah, all the little nooks and crannies and that sort of thing um, versus a wash mitt or if you've got like proper wheel tools, um, yeah, that's ideal. So wheels are done now, we just put the, the foam on the car, we let that dwell, obviously depending on the conditions of the day, if it's hot, um, you're going to leave it on there shorter just because we don't want it to dry on the car, right um, on. now we're just going to rinse it off. Sweet as, and then foam again after that? Foam again and then we'll go to the next step. Sweet. We'll get the water off it, yeah, and then we'll just see if there's any of that contaminant stuff. And if there is, we'll do that, and then we'll just give it a quick spray wax and do the tyres. Right on. And when you said dry, you said start with the windows first. Why is that? Uh, I just do it that way, just because the dry, the towel is dry, yeah. and then you're going to let you're not going to put streaks all over the glass. Like if you've got a wet towel, and you go, it just creates more work for you later on. Right on. Very good. Just when you thought you'd drive the car, Woody. Really, really. <laughs> Step 17.5 when you're washing your car is to go to www.theskidfactory.com and uh, get yourself a lemon squash cooler. After it arrives, you can crack open a lemon squash. That's not even a lemon squash cooler. It's not, not even our bread. It, it looks exactly like this, except for this one's got Outback <laughs> Ballooning written on it. <laughs> one you get will have the skid factory on it. <laughs> right on, once the car's dry, I've moved on to clean the, the windows with the glass cleaner. Bars bikes are probably well known for their like windscreen washer additive, eh? That's 
Yeah, the, well, Bars Bugs is the windscreen washer additive that obviously helps your wipers get rid of all the schmutz if you're in the outback <laughs> and you're running through a like a herd of locusts. It's a plague of insects. Is it a herd or a plague? A plague. Anyway, so I've got the glass paint on there. They also have the rain repellent, which that works. That's that's killer. Don't even have to use your wipe blades if you've got that stuff on. And Mitch is doing the tie shine. Straight on to, what's this duvalaki you got here? Well, key for that, if you're gonna, like most people will just spray that straight on the, the clean tire, but you're just gonna get all that, it's one, it's gonna go in the cracks and fling off as you drive, and yeah. you're gonna just get all that overspray over everything you've just cleaned. So, so I just spray it in, into an applicator. Yeah. If you don't have that, you could just use a cloth, like a clean cloth, spray it on there and just rub it in. Right on, what do you reckon, Roger? Is it all right? You're doing good? What's this? Oh, <laughs> fit in like that. She's looking pretty good. I mean, the whole car definitely does need a, a clay bar and a good con decontamination and a, a, a polish, but today we're just using a quick fast wax after our wash just to give it a good gloss. Do you rate that stuff? Or not? It's actually pretty good. It's really thick, so I probably wouldn't recommend spraying it like on the paint. I'll probably just spray it into the cloth and then wipe it on. All right, that's a pro tip for me because I, yeah. I just coat <laughs> my crayon. Yeah, if you spray it, it's just going to go everywhere. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> right on. And the old fold of the cloth, so you get eight turns. Well, then, yeah, then you've got different, like rather than just the scrunch mm -hmm. bum, like <laughs> you've got a few sides, and then once you, you can just yeah, yeah, flip it over. Yeah. Folder, <laughs> not a I don't off. know if I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about that. <laughs> Scrunching is such a waste. Oh, don't, well. don't waste the rainforest. <laughs> Well, we made it to the big day. It's formal day. We've got swarms of uh, beautiful looking young people ready to go to their year 11 formal. We've got a nice selection of skid factory cars plus one really nice GT Falcon here. So we're going to hit the road, go for a little cruise and then drop them off at the event.
there, Grammys. There's nothing like a deadline to get you to kick your ass into gear and get things finished. We flogged ourselves for six or so months, but we got there. Successfully dropped off Gussie at the uh, foyer, the red carpet. Why didn't you skid to leave? Oh, I don't think that's, I think it might be frowned upon to do a skid when you're leaving. So it's all done. We've got a heap of people to thank. Um, for a start, I just got to thank um, Cam and uh, Mark and Gav for also offering their vehicles and bringing uh, some of Gussie's friends along. So we had a bit of a procession. It was good fun. So thanks to those guys. Heaps of other people to thank for the build itself, but we will come back to that because I've got to go and sit down at the table, have a few lemon squashes and celebrate the victory of finishing the car in time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. You did good, donkey. Oh. Yeah, let me get this on camera. Let me film this on camera. Yeah. Hug it out. That's a selfie stick. That's how Alan says thank you. Well, hugging you. Say the head gas, it's a no, it's not, it's my car. I want <laughs> no, it'll probably devo him more. <laughs> Matty, Matty Rogan will be late. I told you. I <laughs> know, oh, I already sent him a message with a picture of it on. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be hot, bro. Careful. Cool. Oh, that sounds pretty cool, I reckon. Hang on, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. <laughs> leave, leave it, Sid. Don't with the Rogans. Ah, oh, it's gone on the other side of the pulley. Oh, who designed that? Cross chamber and engine position. It's fine. Oh. Down that far. Yeah, but you shave up your cheeks, I shave down here. Um, why are people so obsessed with what I look like? Yes, I've got grey hairs. Yes, I'm slowly balding. And yes, I've got a shit beard. Got a shit beard. <laughs> <laughs> to the pub, please, driver.